so dear students today's topic is on ankle joint so ankle joint uh, it is otherwise called as talocrural joint so we can see here is the anterior aspect of the ankle joint where the distal end of tibia and fibula gripping the talus we can see the articular surface of talus so it is otherwise called talo crural joint so the movements which are happening at the ankle joint are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion ankle joint is a strong weight bearing joint of lower limb so if you see the type it is the synovial joint of hinge variety So it is a synovial joint of hinge variety where only dorsiflexion and plantar flexion happens. So moving on to the articular surfaces, the upper articular surface is formed by the lower end of the tibia, including medial malleolus. So we can see the tibia, and this is medial malleolus, and it also includes the lateral malleolus formed by the inferior part of fibula so a lower end of fibula is called as lateral malleolus so this forms the superior or the proximal articulating surface and the lower or the distal articulating surface is formed by the articular surfaces of upper medial and lateral aspect of talus so superior medial and lateral aspect of talus so the unique feature of the talus if we see it has got only the articulating facets so it doesn't give any attachment to any muscle it is uh, it just forms the joints so we can see it forms the ankle joint here and below the talus it articulates with the calcaneum to form subtalar joint let's see the factors which provides stability to the ankle joint so passive factors are the medial and lateral uh, ligaments so we can see here medial collateral ligament so medial and lateral uh, collateral ligament complexes like medial ligament is called as the deltoid ligament which is one of the strongest ligament in our body which uh, protects the ankle joint on either side medial collateral and lateral collateral ligaments and also the distal tibio fibular ligament so the ligament between the tibia and fibula ligament also protects the ankle joint so because of this ligament it deepens the tibio fibular socket posteriorly uh, by inferior tibio fibular ligament so posteriorly the socket is deepened this is the anterior view so here is the tibio fibular ligament on the posterior aspect where it deepens the uh, socket of ankle joint superior socket of the ankle joint is deepened because of this ligaments and apart from the ligaments even the tendons the tendons crossing the ankle joint there are four tendons which cross the ankle joint anteriorly and five tendons which cross the ankle joint posteriorly which protects the ankle joint and bony counters and capsular attachments also protects the ankle joint so if we see the talus here the superior aspect of the talus is called as the trochlear surface so what we are seeing is the superior aspect which is called as the trochlear uh, surface of the talus which is wider in front than behind so during dorsiflexion that is the move, uh, upward movement of the foot is called as dorsiflexion so during dorsiflexion what happens the ankle joint of uh, the uh, anterior wider part of the trochlea moves posteriorly and fits properly into tibio fibular mortis tibio fibular mortis is this u like it is like a 
uh, groove which is dome like which is formed between the tibia and fibula is called as tibio fibular mortis hence the ankle joint is more stable in dorsiflexion than plantar flexion so these are some of the passive factors which provides the stability to the ankle joint let's see about the dynamic factors first factor is the gravity so the gravity from the pull down uh, also protects the ankle joint and muscle actions like calf muscles like soleus and gastrocnemius helps to increase the stability when leaning forward so these are some of the dynamic uh, factors providing the stability and let's see the factors preventing it from displacement because it is a very stronger joint and it is a weight bearing joint and uh, it should be also protected to prevent displacement so first talking about the talus talus is wider anteriorly and wedge shaped so the malleoli are uh, oriented to fit this wedge so we can see the lateral malleolus which is formed by the lower end of fibula and medial malleolus which is formed by the medial end of tibia so these malleolus it makes the proper mortise where the wedge shaped talus fits properly then if we see at the posterior border lower end of tibia so here we can see the posterior part of the lower end of the tibia so the posterior border of the lower end of tibia is prolonged downwards deepening the um, superior articulating surface the other factor is the presence of inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament so here is the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament which is present posteriorly as well as the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament which is present anteriorly so these ligaments uh, also deepens the proximal articulating facets and posterior tibio uh, talar posterior tibio fibular calcaneo fibular and tibio calcaneum ligaments passes downwards and resists the forward movement of tibia and fibula so these factors prevents the ankle joint from dislocation let's begin the ligaments which are associated with the ankle joint so we know it is a synovial joint so the first and foremost ligament is fibrous capsule so it is surrounded by the fibrous capsule completely and it is attached to the articular margins of the joint all around the two except posterior superiorly where it is attached to the inferior transverse tibio fibular ligament so this area where the capsule is deficient and antero inferiorly where attached to the dorsum of the neck of the talus so the dorsum of the neck of the talus here anteriorly it is deficient and where uh, we see the attachment to the dorsum of the neck of the talus at the same distance from the trochlear surface so the joint capsule is thin in front and behind to allow the hinge movements uh, and of the joint whereas uh, the capsule is thicker on the either side where it blends with the collateral ligaments so inner aspect of the joint capsule it is lined by the synovial membrane so synovial membrane lines the inner surface of the joint capsule but it ceases at the periphery of the articular cartilages and a small synovial processes extends upwards into the inferior tibiofibular syndesmosis so beginning with the tibio calcaneal ligament Uh, it attaches from the tibia to the sustentaculum talli of calcaneum so it is a little deeper and uh, it attaches between the tibia and sustentaculum talli next about the tibio navicular ligament so this is the tibio navicular part so the tibio navicular part of the deltoid ligament attaches to the spring ligament which is called as plantar calcaneo navicular ligament so you can see here this is plantar calcaneo navicular ligament here it is so this tibio navicular contains attaches to the spring ligament which is a ligament of the arches of the foot and it prevents over eversion of the foot means outward movement is called over eversion of the foot and helps to maintain the medial longitudinal arch 
so that is about the tibio navicular part so let's uh, moving to the lateral side so the lateral ligament is again divided into three parts so the uh, if we can see the lateral malleolus which is formed by the uh, lateral side of the lower end of fibula and uh, the we can see how the lateral malleolus is connected to the tarsal bones so the first part is the anterior talofibular ligament which connects the anterior part of the lateral malleolus to the neck of the talus that is called anterior talofibular ligament next is the posterior talofibular ligament from the malleolar fossa that is from the deeper side from the malleolar fossa which connects to the lateral tubercle of talus so posterior talofibular ligament is not that clearly seen on the lateral side because it uh, attaches to the malleolar fossa malleolar fossa is present on the medial aspect of the uh, fibula and the third part is the calcaneo fibular ligament which connects the calcaneum with fibula that is from the notch on the lower border of the lateral malleolus so the notch on the lower border of the lateral malleolus it connects to the calcaneum so that is the tubercle on the lateral surface of the calcaneum so which is called as calcaneo fibular ligament so these are the three parts of the lateral ligament and lateral ligament is most frequently injured than the medial ligament uh, the injury occurs primarily by the accidental inversion of the plantar flexed foot and because uh, the it prevents the mainly uh, over inversion we know the deltoid ligament prevents the over inversion of the foot lateral ligament that is uh, medial uh, lateral ligament prevents the over inversion of the foot if there is an accidental inversion of the plantar flexed foot it may cause a sprain to the lateral ligament so here one more image to uh, identify the medial and lateral ligaments so this is the lateral ligament which is the part of lateral ligament called as calcaneo fibular ligament and we can also appreciate the medial ligaments from the posterior aspect so this is so this is tibio calcaneal ligament and this is so here is the inferior tibio fibular ligament so these ligaments are associated with the ankle joint from the posterior aspect of the ankle joint we can appreciate these parts so let's discuss the relations of the ankle joint ankle joint anteriorly it is related to from medial to lateral it is related to tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus anterior tibial artery deep peroneal nerve and extensor digitorum longus and also it is related to peroneus tertius to remember these relations we can make a mnemonic like the himalayas are not dry plateaus it is it is for tibialis anterior himalayas means extensor hallucis h hallucis longus are not a a is for anterior tibial artery then nerve that is a deep peroneal nerve then dry d for extensor digitorum longus plateaus p for finally peroneus tertius so this is how you can make your own mnemonic to remember the relations anterior to the ankle joint let's discuss about the posterior relations posteriorly from medial to lateral the ankle joint is related to tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus posterior tibial artery posterior tibial nerve and flexor hallucis longus so we shall make one more mnemonic to remember this that is the doctors are not here the is for tibialis anterior doctors flexor digitorum longus d is for digitorum then r e a is for artery so posterior tibial artery 
not n for nerve that is the posterior tibial nerve then h h for hallucis flexor hallucis longus so this is these are the relations posterior relations of the ankle joint from medial to lateral side let's discuss the arterial supply of the ankle joint ankle joint is supplied by the malleolar branches of anterior tibial posterior tibial and peroneal arteries and movements happening at the ankle joint are two movements which we already discussed dorsiflexion and plantar flexion the range of motion of dorsiflexion is 20 degrees and for plantar flexion is around 45 degrees in dorsiflexion the forefoot the forefoot is raised the angle between the foot and the leg uh, that is the dorsum of the foot and the leg is diminished and it is closed packed position for the ankle joint with maximum congruency of the articular surfaces and tension of the ligaments so the ankle joint is more stable in dorsiflexion let us know about the plantar flexion so in plantar flexion the forefoot is depressed down where the angle between the uh, dorsum of the leg and the foot is increased so in this position the joint is loose packed position of the ankle joint where the joint is unstable in plantar flexion so let's see the muscles producing these movements dorsiflexion is by tibialis anterior the accessory muscles which cross from the anterior are extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus peroneus tertius so these are all accessory muscles then plantar flexion is mainly by gastrocnemius soleus so and it is also caused by the tibialis posterior which is posterior muscle plantaris muscle and flexor digitorum longus flexor hallucis longus also so all these are the posterior relations which forms the plantar which helps in the plantar flexion let us discuss about some clinical aspect of the ankle joint so potts fracture which is otherwise called as diputrans fracture it is caused by the forced eversion of the foot and involves the lower end of the fibula and often accompanied by the fracture of the medial malleolus and rupture of deltoid ligament so that is about the potts fracture or diputrans fracture next we shall move on to ankle sprains which are very common so the excessive stretching or tearing of the ligaments or at the ankle joint uh, are termed as ankle sprains so the ankle sprains are usually caused by the falls from the height or twist of the ankle so when the plantar flexed foot is excessively inverted then anterior and posterior talofibular and calcaneofibular which are the lateral ligaments will get stretched and torn the anterior talofibular ligament is most commonly torn among the lateral uh, ligaments so the uh, anterior talofibular is often affected so when the plantar flexed foot is excessively everted the deltoid ligament is torn and also there may be avulsion fract fracture of medial malleolus so the inversion sprains are more common than the eversion sprains because deltoid is more stronger than the lateral ligament deltoid is the medial ligament so after fractures let's move on to the dislocation of the ankle joint the dislocation of the ankle joint are uh, rare because it is a very stable joint due to tibiofibular mortis however whenever the dislocation occurs it always accompanied by the fracture of one of the malleoli either medial or lateral malleoli may be involved in fractures along with the dislocation so this completes the clinical correlation and normal anatomy of ankle joint thank you